Welcome to the show that takes you behind the scenes at Flamingoland Theme Park and Zoo in North Yorkshire during the countdown to opening for the 2006 summer season. And stay tuned for the chance to win a family break in Northumberland later in the programme. It's just three days till the park opens to the public and there's still a lot to do. The new attraction, a £6 million roller coaster called Kumali, is being put through one final crucial test before it's allowed to carry passengers for the first time. Well, this is one of the final checks that we have to do and it's to check that the people's legs who are dangling underneath the train don't hit any of the theming that's been put up over the last couple of weeks. And to do that, they fitted a large plywood structure right on the front of the train, which is the actual distance away from the train that the people might reach if they're, if they're the longest people that, are, that go on the ride. And we're going to run that round and just hope that it gets around. fine, it was well clear. Well, that's good news. Because my big worry with this, doing this test, is so close to opening, is the remedy, if it doesn't get round, can put us back by a day, so that's pretty good news. Right, girls, are you ready? Come in, then. Over in the Plaza Bar, the cast of the Professor Bubbles Children's Show are busy trying on the costumes made by producer Haley's mum, Carol. What do I look like? Do I look sick? <laughs> Are you no. happy with the lens for them? <laughs> um, yes, I think Mel's looks a bit short. Is this the one that was dropped in the mud? Yes. Have you not washed it yet? I thought you were washing it. <laughs> <laughs> How can I wash it at home when you have it here? Well, I don't... That's very true. <laughs> Unless you want me to take it home now and I bring it back. I think you'll have to take it home. Because you'll be washing them every week, won't you? Yeah. 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 Every week. Naturally. Yeah. That's all right then. In the Jolly Sailor, one of Flamingo Land's busiest restaurants, staff are busy putting the finishing touches. I'm Tom. I've been here. It's my third year now. In a few days' time, all 200 seats in this restaurant are going to be full. Put some vinegar in hot water here gives it a nice shine when you polish it. The restaurant itself is like an Italian style restaurant, pizzas, pastas, salad. In high season you can expect to probably fill it about four times over during the lunchtime. That's a bit we all look forward to. Do you like my hat anyway? In the kitchen, Gabor's trying out some new dishes. He's not a professional chef, he's an economics graduate from Hungary. I've tried to do a, a salad. Uh, a special salad. It's not on the menu, but we just try to uh, figure out now. And uh, it will be on a special board, hopefully, if everybody likes it. So I try to prepare that now. All right, firstly, lettuce. Chop some tomato. Flamingo Land Marketing Director Melanie Wood, the boss's sister, is working from home today. It's very, very difficult to juggle family life and work life. I've got a very, very good nanny who helps out tremendously. Um, but it's nice that I have the, the choice to go to work or actually work from home. Working from home is actually far more productive than going into work sometimes because you get pulled um, every which way. So when I'm at home, it's a far more relaxed, far more productive atmosphere, to be honest. I don't get an enormous amount of leisure time because the children are so young. We're very fortunate. Um, last year we, we built a, an indoor swimming pool. So we're now able to, once the children are asleep, have a few laps of the swimming pool and a bit of a relax in the jacuzzi. So that's probably what we look forward to at the end of a hard day. My job this year is particularly demanding. Uh, I, I will be making a new 10-second commercial um, that's not something I do every year, basically because it's so costly. It's a very high percentage of my annual marketing budget. It's going to cost us in the region of £30,000, and that is just for a 10-second advert. 
it's vital that I don't make any mistakes in the filming, in the editing, choosing what rides we're going to put. It's so important that we get the right mix straight away because it's um, a lot of money for me to waste. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen at the Jolly Sailor. Do you like cooking a book? Yeah, I like it. Like, this is my hobby, actually, one of my hobby. That's a bit strange. I'm, I'm working here and like uh, my real job is like an economist, so I should be in a bank or in a stock or something like that, but maybe later on. I, I feel too young myself to, to work in behind the computer and typing and co computer things. So. At the minute, I'm trying to put in a tuna and salad. After it, we'll be going some sweet corn on uh, and lemon. That's my idea for the new salad, but I think it looks all right. But I think we need to ask somebody else as well. Yeah, oh, nice. mate. Look at that. I tried some new things. Beautiful. There's a salad going out with baguette, like usually, but this is a new type of salad. It's called like tuna and sweet corn. We'll just set up this table. All right. Salad, eating salad stuff. But I'm it. Very, very nice. Honestly. Mm. Yeah. Makes a chain. Uh, yeah. But I know I'm good, so. <laughs> Go back to your kitchen. He probably doesn't like the ground too firm. Yeah. Yeah. Melanie, the marketing director, has taken the afternoon off work to go with her husband Tim to visit their racehorse Max, who's in training with John Quinn at his yard in North Yorkshire. And as we said, if you... my husband struggled very much with uh, deciding on what to buy me for birthdays and Christmas. And about three Christmases ago, he thought it was something that was a bit different, and indeed it was. He bought Max uh, as a surprise Christmas present for me, which was lovely, very, very nice. And, and to be honest, I never guessed for a minute what it was, which is unusual because I usually do guess. Yeah, I need a good start. Absolutely, because we know he doesn't like the ground too fast. Right. Night last summer, Timothy, when we ran him at York. So is Maxie at the front? Max is in front. Let's hope he stays like that for the rest of the season. Come on, Maxie. In our leisure time, when we do get it, we, we like to go to the races. We have um, three race horses now, two not very successful ones that we don't talk about, but one <laughs> moderately successful horse that my husband and son especially go out and watch train at the weekend. You can tell the horses who are more forward, they're getting up there easily, yeah, easily, easily, lovely, easily, easily. If Max easily. Was, was running locally, we would go and watch him and, and, and jeer him on and, and, and hopefully um, celebrate in his win, which uh, he hasn't had too many of, but, you know, um, he's doing OK. So... Let's hope he can be winning again this year. Absolutely. And I feel he will. <laughs> Backstage at the Plaza Bar, the cast of the Professor Bubbles show are preparing for a special preview in front of the park's bosses. I always make silly mistakes when I'm nervous. Yeah. Well, don't tell me that, Mel. <laughs> me and Donna were talking yesterday about um, how we blank. Like when, yeah. we just stand, when you just stand there and you go, the <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> start dancing again. Yeah, but it won't happen, Hayley, no. honestly. <laughs> Please don't blank. Fortunately, the star of the show, James, who plays Professor Bubbles, has recovered from his back right. trouble. Okay, then. It's really strange having a wide body, isn't it? But Hayley's worried about what the bosses will think of her new rebel character, Professor Troubles. Is that better? Yeah. Are you nervous, Hayley? <laughs> I've never been worried about anything as much in my life. I don't really? Ever. Uh, ever. Right. This is the worst. Yeah. And you're going to proud of the world? What's your favourite? I've never done skin work before. I do really enjoy it, actually. Uh, right, stick my me head on. I hope I can breathe. Transformation straight away. Yay! All right, let's get ready to rumble. For the sweat. If I knew that the new about the new character, and if I think the new about the story and exactly what's going to happen, then I'd be fine. But the mm. fact that they don't know anything, I mean, what's their reaction going to be like as soon as this new character comes out? Are they going to be like? I think that'd be surprised, but in a good way, because it's just to make new, isn't it? But they're not going to. They can't dislike it. 
can they? I mean, it's a good story. Not right. It's yeah. a good story. It's, it's just it's different. So if they don't so like much it, to look at, it's so colourful. Yeah, if they don't it's like it, it's funny just well. purely because it is different, and it, they just have to get used to it being, <laughs> <laughs> being a bit different than what they're used to. I think that I've been brought here to change a few things, and I think that I've definitely and that's what done you've that. Done. Yeah. But whether it's changed for the best, and I think it is. I suppose we're going to find out soon we'll enough. And we'll be finding out what Haley's bosses think of the new production after the break. Now for our competition this week. We're... Theme designer Victoria Gibb, who's married to Flamingo Land's boss, is checking progress on her pet project, the Muddy Duck Farm. Only three days till we open and only a month's worth of work left to do, which isn't at all scary. Um, this is our new cockerel and he's called Cyril and he's really annoying because he grows every 15 minutes very, very loudly, which is... Uh, well, I think it's, we're already sick to death of him and we've had all sorts of workmen threaten to knock him off, kill him, shoot him. He's not real, so it's not going to hurt him any, but I just wonder how long he's going to stay up there. But uh, we should see if the villagers start complaining about him soon. Just in front of us is um, Muddy Duck Duck Pond, <laughs> which is neither muddy nor has any ducks in it at the moment, which is a bit worrying. Apart from the animatronic cockerel, we've also got an animatronic pig. Oh, bless her, she's gorgeous. Look, her little eyes and the flutter, eyelids flutter and everything. <laughs> so she's got ten piglets suckling away there. Some of them are spotty and quite cute. What we've done with this is, you see it from both ways round when you come round on the tractor ride, which is quite nice. And we've built the roof over so that the views are, are good and you, you don't get any sort of rain and the sun doesn't fade her and any of those things. So I'm quite excited about this. How cute is she? Victoria can't spend too long cooing over her plastic pigs. She's due in the plaza bar for the boss's preview of the all-new Professor Bubble show. But when Hayley finds out Victoria's turned up without her husband, park boss Gordon Gibb, she takes it badly. Gordon apparently isn't coming, which I'm just devastated about. Because I thought that's what it was for, me doing the show and then performing for him to show him what I could do. And he's not coming, so I'm really upset about it. He's trying to rearrange, but he didn't know until about an hour ago, so... Anyway... We're going to watch, aren't we, son? He's got his bunny ears on today. But the show must go on, and as it starts, Gordon appears next to his wife. What are you waiting for? Push the button! <laughs> <coughs> oh, dear. Didn't quite work that time, but we were so close. If you see anything happening behind me, you must shout, Professor Bubbles! Ailey's hoping the special effects in her revamped show will win the bosses over. What? Oh, I haven't got time for this. We need to get to work! One, two, three, four, five, everybody's on here! Flamingo Land's big new roller coaster for 2006, Kumali, is about to carry its first ever passenger. Martin Reinfeld from the Dutch company that built the ride will be the test pilot. I do always the first test run after the G-force measurements and every testing what we did. Yeah. We hope that it is a very good ride. I will test it now. So, hopeful. That I come back again with a smiling face <laughs> and that I'm satisfied. No turning back for Martin now. He's about to experience Kumali's G Force. At least ride safety expert Richard Barnes has done his homework and is confident it's safe for humans. The uh, G Force is just around uh, a four and a half G vertical. The 
There's two particular in reasons that we're interested in G-forces. The first is for the actual way that the passengers are affected, so that we don't actually cause injuries to people. And uh, you've got to remember that the people who go on these are not fighter pilots. They're not people who are uh, very, very fit. It's got to be suitable for everybody to go on. So we've got to reduce the Gs to a level which is suitable for people to use and be ride it safely. But secondly, uh, when the calculations are done for fatigue analysis and the way that the trains behave in over a very long term, we need to know what the vibrations are so that we can work that out in the longevity of the ride. Very good. Very smooth. Good. Yep. Really happy with it. It's a really smooth ride. Right? We've not met your nephew, Professor. Is he as clever as you? Back on stage, Haley's new character, Professor Troubles, is about to make his first appearance. I'm here, I'm Troubles, and I'm cool. Over in the zoo, giraffe keeper Sam DeBell is preparing for a big move. We're building a new house on the other side of the park, um, a breeding complex for the giraffes. Um, so we've picked Kismet, our eldest male, um, to go over there. Kismet is a very handsome nine-and-a-half-year-old Rothschild's giraffe. He came here a few, uh, three or four years ago, um, and since then he's been living with our other two male giraffes. Um, He's, he's quite a rare beastie, so it'd be nice if we, if we could breed off him. So that's why we've chosen him to go over to the other house rather than the other, the other two younger males. Kismet's reward for moving will be a new girlfriend called Penny, who will be coming to Flamingo Land from Chester Zoo. Penny's very pretty. Um, I went to see her a few weeks ago, um, went and met her. Um, she's, she's a bit older than Kismet, um, a nice steady beast. Um, she, she has bred before, so hopefully we'll have a, a, a new family in the not too distant future. What's going to happen if they don't fancy each other? We'll have to get Scylla, get Scylla a blind date. I think we'll have to have a blind date giraffe thing. Let's go, you better push the button. Back on stage, Gordon and Victoria are about to witness Haley's most impressive special effect. Press it now, because I say so. Over at Kumali, operations manager Phil Pritchard is the first in the queue of Flamingoland staff wanting to try the new ride. It's nice to see the project almost at an end. Yeah. So, I've been really looking forward to this bit. What a view as well, fantastic. We've still got tomorrow as well, so um, we've got two more Two more days, really. Um, well, off we go. What a view, eh? It's like being in thin air. It's just hanging. Fantastic. Hey, what a sensation. Unbelievable. Do you reckon so? Oh, that is great. Absolutely superb. That's uh, five months hard work and it's worth every bit of it. What do you want to do next, gang? I want to go on Velocity. Yay! Yay! I want to go on Cliffhanger. Oh, Yay! Wow. I want to go to the Muddy Duck Farm. Oh. I know, gang. Let's go on my newest ride. Do you mean the Kamali? But now it's the moment Haley's been dreading. I'll see you 
next time. Bye bye. I'll just let me move it. Don't let's worry. I'm very worried. I'm not Alan Sugar. <laughs> um, well, quite simply, that's the best one we've ever had. Yes. Excellent. Um, couldn't be happier. What more could I want? So, it's all gone brilliantly. The countdown to the opening of the park has begun in earnest. It could be a long night for some people, but Gordon seems to think it's all going well. Well, we're 14 and a half hours away from D-Day, and I have to say it's definitely been the smoothest running I personally have ever had, and I think it's potentially, I'm, I'm probably tempting fate by saying this, but potentially the, the best opening that I can, for one, ever remember. Find out if Gordon was right to be so confident next time. Here's our competition.